little dyslexia community, Norda is here and welcome in new episode of Real Talk with Norda. Uh, today our dear guest is Remy Rousseau, she's 10 years old from United States. Uh, she is dyslexic, her hobbies are boxing and modeling. Uh, she doesn't have plans for the future uh, and she is rolling uh, with punches. Also, uh, she's interested in fashion and our dyslexia community. Uh, hi, Remy. Uh, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm great, and I'm really happy because uh, because of our interview. So, are you ready for real talk with Northern for my questions? Yes. Great. Uh, my first question for you is. What were your first signs of your dyslexia when you started with your school? I think some of the first signs were, I was talking to my dad about this and I just hated learning. I didn't want to read. Mm -hmm. I was miserable. I didn't want to, I would be given like a, in first grade or second grade, my teacher came out and told me, I was like, my mom was like, are you having it? Like Remy looks like she's having issues doing basic uh, reading or something. Like, I bet you she's dyslexic and we were like we didn't have any we didn't have any knowledge about it so we were like no I don't think so and it turns out it was so it was really funny um but I couldn't read letters I didn't like uh learning at all so yeah yes when uh, when were you diagnosed with uh, dyslexia it's been probably 2019 I believe uh -huh. uh, so I didn't know for a really long time after that. Uh, yes, and uh, did you get uh, support in school? Like, uh, what kind of accommodations do you have? Do you have some of accommodations? Like so, extra time or something like that? When I was at a public school, I had, um, I had some accommodations, like they'd let me go to the library for tests. Mm -hmm. But for the longest time, like we signed my IDA 504, and we signed the papers for it and that took like a month after and it was because i asked i was like can i go to the library because we were doing a test and they just my teachers like looked at me straight in the eyes goes you have a 504 like she did not know she had no clue yes. anything it took a long time for it to go through um but i didn't get a lot of support through it i say when i was at the public school when i found out that's the thing is I didn't find out for a while. So yes. when I found out, I got some like emotional support through it, but I didn't get much. Yes. Uh, yes, it was same with me. Like uh, when I was like in those first grades of school, I didn't get so much support, but, uh, but now it's, I can say a little bit better, not too much, but it's okay. It's a function mm -hmm. for me. Yes. And, uh, like, did you struggle with your negative emotions because of your dyslexia? And uh, how do you deal with uh, those negative emotions? When did I first found mm -hmm. out in fifth grade and everyone told me, uh, it's your life is going to be so hard, it's going to suck. And uh, it was just like everyone was coming after me because I told my friend and of course my friend goes and tells everyone else because mm -hmm. that's how school works. Um, yeah. And... So it was very, um, yeah, negative, let's say that. Um, cause, and then I left that school and I wouldn't tell anyone because I was ashamed about it. I was embarrassed about it. And when I would, I would like make pinky, uh, pinky promise and swear that they wouldn't tell anyone. And I was always super cautious about it. But like slowly as I've gotten older, I've realized this, that matters like I'll just walk in the room and be like hey guys I'm dyslexic what about you <laughs> right so um a big amount of open just has um uh, not open um that negative negativity I would like to say is it's like um you're not so negative flowered into it's yes. flowered into something else yes great into new confidence Yes, that is awesome. And I'm really happy when I hear like dyslexic uh, person that is so much open about their dyslexia. And that is awesome for you because you're so 
young and you are like at the beginning of everything and uh, you, that is good when you're young and you accept your uh, dyslexia and uh, could you uh, share with us like who is your biggest support uh, who supports you like 100% uh, with your dyslexia and with your uh, work i would say biggest confidence in my mom because she cherishes me and she loves me and she gives me the most support for stuff so she'll always be by my back my number one uh, cheerleader as i would say and my dad and my sister my family yes. my family get support Mom's our best. Like my mom was big support for me, and literally, mom's mom's their best. Yes, yes. and uh, could you share uh, with us, like, what kind of learning strategies you have? Like, do you have some, um, like, um, way of learning? Do you use some special techniques or something like that? Tips and tricks for, for uh, learning. So I'm a really visual learner, so I like to see what I'm doing. I like having my hands on it. My I can't imagine it. I memorize a lot of things, but right now what I'm doing is I have a tutor that she helps me, and it's Orton Gillingham. Mm -hmm. um, and it's run through this camp this you can take in the summer, which is really great because um, it's a six-week camp, and it's amazing. I love it. This is my last year and my third year of going. And it teaches you um, how to sound out syllables, how to underline, uh, spelling, vocab, everything you can think of. It, uh, tapping, chunking, all of that. So that has been a big uh, help in me. Just so now I know I have all these tools that I can, when I am done, I can go out in the world and I could read a book and if I don't know how to sound it out, I'll sound it out and chunk it and all of these new skills. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> this sounds great. Like uh, when are you like with so many people uh, with dyslexia, like in same camp and you are like sharing your experience with dyslexia and support right. to each other. Like, and of course you are building some new friendships and everything. That is, uh, that is awesome. Yes. Because everyone's dyslexic there or has ADHD or something. So it's just like, like a giant warm hug when you walk in. So everyone has gone through it. Yes, awesome. And uh, could you uh, share, like, which are your dyslexia strengths and weaknesses? Like, few dyslexia strengths and few, like, weaknesses. So I think um, I don't like writing at all. No, yes. <laughs> writing <laughs> totally is not. dyslexic, yes. I have to go do a writing assignment after this and I'm not looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> But I don't like writing because I have a really hard time starting sentences and um, getting my words out on paper. And I also go way too fast. So I'll speed and it up. Finding, and like finding right word, what to, right. What to say. Uh, yes. Because yes. I'll write a sentence like the hat and the cat, right? Except for I'll write cat hat. I'll like yes. miss half the words in the sentence. Yeah, I'll think about my brain. I'm like, okay, uh, the cow walked over the moon or something like that, right? But it's actually just I've written like the cow moon, <laughs> something like yes. that. Yes. Um, one of my biggest strengths, I think it is, is it has brought me a whole lot of confidence knowing that it's like such a power, it's such a gift. Um. But learning wise, I've started to get better at like reading and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I say the biggest gift it's gotten me is just, it gives me such a big boost of confidence. It's such a gift in my mind. Um, yeah. Awesome, great. And uh, we are on our last question for you. And right. that is message for our dyslexia community. Like, what do you think, what is the most important for every person with dyslexia? From your experience, of course. The most important thing I've learned is to go slowly, have patience with what you're doing. Um, to not underestimate yourself, because there's a lot of strength in your own self, being 
Um, and also, what anyone else says to you about it doesn't mean anything. You're the ones that are putting power in their words, right? Yes. So if someone comes up to you and tells you, oh, you suck at reading, it's like, cool. Okay. Right. Anyways, great, right? That is me. Um, yes. That is me. I'll work on it. Um, and it's just such, so common nowadays. No one realizes it and no one knows any uh, how to learn about it. And it's just such a gift and people shouldn't be ashamed of it and just take your time and yes. figure it out. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, dear Remy, for this beautiful message and for this uh, interview. And uh, thank you for coming on Real Talk with Norda. And, uh, thank you. Yes. And uh, thank you, my dear little dyslexia community, for watching this episode of Real Talk with Norda. And uh, of course, uh, don't forget to watch other episodes of Real Talk with Norda and follow Remy and me on our uh, social media accounts. And yes, um, I wish you all the best and see you in some new video. Bye. Bye, Remy. Thank you.